What's up guys? You are on the air and off the books with Bethan and Samantha and today we are going to talk about the greatest book of all time. The yeah, OG. The the yeah. <laughs> Glory of Horror. Yeah, it's so good. It's so gory and perfect and awesome and it's definitely like what i imagine horror to be like this is what i want when i yeah. read horror and this book is dun 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 the call by peter o'gillian pa- pa- paydar i think it's peter Pater. 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 <laughs> i don't think it's that oh o'gillian it's definitely irish yes so interpret that name as you will i think it's peter o'gillian but that is just my best guess. Yes. Um, so Beth Ann is going to give a little summary of what this book is about. Um, she has actually read this full book. I read to the halfway mark. Oh, the times have changed. Yes. yes. This one time. <laughs> so this is a actually a YA, I would say YA thriller slash horror. Horror. Which it's super surprising that it's YA because it's so grotesque. I mean, it's pretty gnarly. Like, it's bad news bears. Yes. Um, If you like blood and guts and, like, horror and, like, body gore and, like, being on the edge of puking every second and, like, anxiety, like, Mm -hmm. this is such a good book. And, like, if you like, like, Irish folklore and, like, things about Faye, I think Faye is kind of, but, like, how they are, like, in actual Irish, like, literature and stuff like that. Yeah. Or, like, I guess they're fairies. I read, I listened to the audiobook, and they're actually, the name of them are actually pronounced Seetha. Yeah, and it's weird because, like... It's spelled with a D. Yeah, it, it does not, like, a lot of the names are not pronounced how they are spelled whatsoever. I had no idea how to pronounce it. I was just, I, yeah. I don't know how I was pronouncing it. I think it was... Today, that's how I started. Like I started reading it and pronounced it that way, and then I was like, "I I need to listen to this." Yeah. So, um, the person who reads it is Irish, so their accent and they know how to do all that. And some of the names are really difficult. Yeah. Because some of those names are like, I couldn't even begin. The only name that I knew was the A O I F E because it was in the book that we read, um, the Lucy Foley book. Um, uh, the about the island and the wedding on the island. Oh, um, I forget what it's called. Not Ten Perfect Strangers. Mm. No, that's not mm. it. It's um, I know exactly what you're talking about, but it's that murder mystery book. Yes. So I'm pretty sure that name's pronounced Effie. I think so. Yeah. But like. I think the other names were fine, but then, yeah, I, didn't, I yeah. wasn't sure how to pronounce the um, S-I-D-H-E is how it's spelled. Yeah. So, I was just kind of making up, but, making up words. Yeah. So, if you like listening, this is a really good one to listen to, um, but fair warning, it is kind of hard to navigate as far as, like, their pronunciation for some of the things that they have. But I'm going to read to you, like, when I first came upon this book, this is the first thing that I saw. That got me into it. And it says, you have three minutes to save your life. Three minutes. You wake up alone in a horrible land. A horn sounds. The call has begun. Two minutes. The sea that are close. They're the most beautiful and terrible people you've ever seen. And they've seen you. One minute. Nessa will be called soon. No one thinks she has any chance to survive. But she's determined to prove them wrong. Time's up. Could you survive the call? And this says it's... um. A blend of fantasy, horror, and folklore. And that's just like the teaser. And there's another like description down here that talks of, that basically sums up um, the fact that they're in Ireland and it's actually like kind of like in today times, like present time. Yeah. And the first thing that you notice is that there there are no people that are like teenagers. Right. Everybody's older and there are not a lot of people that exist in the towns and things like that and it's about this girl named Nessa who I think she has polio 
right? I'm not sure. I just know that she, her, they describe her as her legs are twisted. Yeah. She has some disease where she can't, she has to use crutches to walk. Right. And she can't run. She, um, she's very, she has like almost no mobility, like without her crutches and things like that. So she's already at a disadvantage from the Mm -hmm. very jump. Um, And it talks about how she gets on this bus to go to this college. And she's probably, what, around 14 years old? I would say, like, I was thinking 15 or 16, but I'm not sure. Because there's a certain time where the call happens. But they're on this bus, and this kid gets called. And what happens is he disappears. And in their time, in their world, they have three minutes before his body or he comes back alive. And in the description, it talks about how he comes back. And he's like, um, he comes back dead. He shows up in the bus where he was called away dead. And there are antlers growing out of his head. Mm -hmm. And there's blood and like all of this other stuff. And so essentially what this book is about is it's about um, this war that had taken place a long time ago where human beings had overrun um, these people called the Sitha, which are like fae, fairies, something like that of the land. Mm -hmm. And they... um, had this war, and then they signed a pact with the Sitha after they defeated them, saying that they had to go live in somewhere called the Greylands. And they were pushed into this, like, other dimension Mm -hmm. that has different time, different, like, everything. Like, it's a totally different world. And it's all gray, and it's very, like, grotesque and awful, and, like, nothing is good there, and nothing grows there. And when they were called away or pushed away into this land, the Sitha started to... Um, open up like these little potholes for a certain time of teenagers' lives mm-hmm. and they'll call away these individuals to hunt them down and basically grotesquely murder them in cold blood and then send them back as like this message like one day we're going to come back and we're going to have our la- our lands back. Right. And these kids' whole lives are raised to survive these this call which is three minutes in our world but it could be like months in their world that they're right. hunted by these beings um and they are trained to fight to kill to survive to do all this some survive um most do not yeah and i thought it was interesting how they call because they call it college but you're not a college age person yeah. you're like what 13 yeah what, it starts at what 10 i think or? it starts at 10 yeah, so you're going, you're basically training from age 10, right? To yes. survive the. And they go through like this calling. crazy, rigorous training. Mm-hmm. Um, I think after this point, there might be some spoilers. I don't know what's going to be like what you don't want to know now or not. So just fair warning. But um, like, it's so grueling, and there are so many different characters um, because like they run these kids with no shoes, they like create hunting parties and like. Um, older kids hunt the little kids out in the um, woods and they have to learn how to hunt pigs and kill pigs in the woods and like do all of these like crazy scenarios they have to learn this history and it's and it's so crazy because like all of the adults that teach these people have been through this call but they're so scarred from like everything that they've experienced like most are drunks or most are like mentally so scarred that they can't function on a day-to-day basis and Mm -hmm. There are, people are full of depression and like because like their humanity is being wiped out essentially from these things murdering their children. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, like when these kids serve, if these kids survive the call, their the expectation from the world and the government is for them to get married and have more children. Yeah. And it's just like this spiral thing because nobody can figure out how to stop the call. Um. And it happens to everyone. Like, you can't escape it. Question. So yeah. do they figure out how to escape it by the end of the book? They don't. They don't? Not in this book. But there's three books? There's two. Two books? Okay. I haven't read the second one. So, mainly, the main character is technically supposed to be Nessa, but um, I was talking to Nolan, your husband, because mm-hmm. he's listened to it. And he and we agreed that we think that the main character is actually the call. The call, yeah. Because it's centered around this thing, and it's like the author wrote it for you to experience this as well. Yeah. Um, But if you had to pick, like, a main character, it would be Nessa. Right. Um, I feel like each, like, each chapter is 
well, almost each chapter is about other people, like each individual call. Like, yeah. we're calling, what was his name, Kieran, or... Yeah. Um, like, it'll flip from there Emma. to a call to back yeah. to present. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I thought... I think that was the only thing that confused me was maybe, like, the names of the chapters, like, threw me off. And yeah. I was, like, thinking, okay, there's, like, 20 different stories going on when really it's just about the call. And there's no, like, past, present yeah, type thing going on. So it does all – it makes sense. But my way of thinking was just, like, okay, there's all these chapters, so this must be from, like – a whole bunch of different like perspectives and stories but it it makes sense and I also like the fact too that it seemed more like real life because even in the human world there were like these cliques and like tiers of society mm-hmm. like there were the group of like outstanding kids who everybody believed would survive the call and like the teachers poured into these kids because they were strong and fast and cunning and they would bully people like Nessa and her friend group who were different in yeah. um, a whole bunch of different ways. And, like, um, and it just, it, it mainly goes and follows Nessa, who who can't even run. Mm-hmm. And how, like, everybody assuming, like, and pitying her because, like, as soon as you get called, you're going to be dead. Like, they're yeah. going to find you and they're going to kill you in the worst ways possible. Um, and how she kind of essentially, like, trains without these people and tricks them into believing that she's an invalid so that when she does succeed like she'll be like this hero hero kind of Mm -hmm. um and it also follows her like exploring like what love is because she loves this boy and he loves her back but she can't risk sharing that because for one he could die and she could lose him and she doesn't want to grieve that but at the same time she doesn't want to hinder him because of who she is and, like, her disability and things like that. So it's full of all this, like, complex emotion. Um, But what does happen is so we find out that when these kids are called, if they are good enough to put up a fight with the Sita, and if the Sita find them interesting, then the Sita make them a deal Mm -hmm. to send them back with either no damage or to moderately scar them in a way as um, kind of like um, to trick the human world into thinking that kids can survive, but it has to be a secret Mm -hmm. because the Seether are actually planning on invading the human world because um, there's this certain... um, and I guess in their folklore, there's a certain thing where, like, the stars kind of align, essentially, and, like, the portal opens up where the Seether can come through. And so when they are making a deal with these humans, they're saying, we'll, we'll let you live mm-hmm. if you go back and when we invade, you fight for us. So they really, technically, they really can't survive the call. They can't. They can No one can survive it. They're just... Allowing them to survive. In exchange for their help fighting... The humans. The humans when they come in to take their land. So essentially all these people that they've saved... All know but won't talk about the fact that if this ever happens... They will be held accountable to these monsters to fight against the people that they love... In exchange for them being saved, essentially. Which I don't believe would ever happen... So the book gets to the point where... um, I feel like there's going to be a twist. They come through, and they start massacring schools. Yeah, because I know in the beginning they massacred the one school. Yes. Yes. Um, But I feel like there's going to be, like, either in this book or the second book, there's going to be, like, a twist. Like, does Nessa go through the call? She does. And she's... Most likely she lives, or quote-unquote. So she goes through the call when they start to invade. And because of that... She survives. She survives. Yep, knew it. And she's able to walk through the portal and get out. And when she does, she is they're able to fight back in a way that closes it so that they can't kind of um, come in. But that's not the end of it. Because they promise that 
she, um, they promise that they're going to come back and invade again. Mm -hmm. um, the school ends up burning down. Um, they find out all these conspirators. But what she doesn't tell them, she doesn't tell anyone that, like, the golden boy of the school made a deal to be able to fight against everyone and that he, he had this, like, weird crush on her, too. Yeah. Um, and he tries to, like... Some sort of rapey... Take advantage of her. Yeah. He tries, like, multiple yeah. times throughout the whole thing. He has this weird fantasy about her. And he made a deal with the prince of the see the people to fight for them, and he does. And she takes him down and kills him, but she doesn't tell anybody that she killed him. And she doesn't tell anybody that, like, this whole plan that's going on. She doesn't say anything at the end of the book. She just keeps it to herself because, in her mind, she's survived and she can have a life now. Mm -hmm. And so this next book is essentially going to be about the end of it. Like, they're coming, and then they got to have to figure out, like, what's going on. But right. I don't know that I... I want to read the second one, but I'm worried because... It talks about in the description that she gets punished for withholding information and like possibly like the person that she loves and she settles down with, he leaves her because he can't trust her because of all this stuff comes to light. It's worth finishing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so great. I think my favorite parts are the actual monsters because I've never read anything like them before. Yeah. Because it says like the, the main thing that they learn is don't ever let them touch you. Mm -hmm. because it's like as soon as they touch you it's like searing pain throughout your body and like with their hands they can manipulate your body into whatever they want it to be right they did you get to the part where they sent that boy back and he's like a, a raging monster like he's this massive monster that they've yes. contorted into this crazy being and he like they have to kill him in the human world because yes. he's just obliterating people at the school or um that my favorite part is when the prince goes and tries to fight somebody in a duel, but his cloak that he wears is made of human faces. Ugh. And it's all distorted, and, like, the trim is, like, his ha their hands. And it talks about in the book that you can hear the faces moaning in agony and, like, vomiting all over themselves because they're in constant form of pain. And mm. he talks about how beautiful it is and, like, yes. how it's, like, his favorite creation, and he adds to it all the time and, like... Just the thought that the people are still writhing and alive and he wears them every day and they're in pain forever. And even the landscape of it is crazy. The monsters and stuff like yeah. that. So it's a good book. If you love body horror. Body horror. This is definitely the book for you. I like it a lot. Yeah, I liked it so far. I give it a four out of five. Yes, I would definitely give it a five out of five. I like that I a need lot. to finish it. You should. I, I highly recommend. Will. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. But we have this book. Um, I think we have it on audio. Yes, on Hoopla. Book on Hoopla. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have it on Libby. We don't have it on Libby, but we do have a physical copy in the library. Yes, which I will return for somebody <laughs> to check out. Yes, and if, the good thing about Hoopla is, is that there are no holds. So yes. you can go on and check that out anytime that you want. Um, yes. It's worth reading. Yes, and you guys need to join us next week because we're going to be talking about the Night Circus with um, three guests, Ben, um, Justin, and Ben's wife, Kaylee. So that's going to be fun, and we're going to see who likes it and who hates it. And I hope that I love it because I'm really worried. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it today. So. Woohoo! All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.